Sorry I couldn't film yesterday. We got back late from a restaurant and I needed to go to sleep. But um, I finally made my video plan and I've put a line through the ones I've done. Obviously yeah, yesterday I couldn't do it so I just put a line there. But um, I'm going to try and do two videos today. But this one is Autism and Hidden Traits. I have my list there. Um, so the first one is stimming. This isn't always hidden, but certain things people wouldn't really know about. So like fiddling with hands, that's a trait that people don't always know about or know that it's connected to that. And then I'm quiet at school, but then um, at home I'm like constantly making noises and messing around and stuff. Um, so that's the first one. Um, if you suspect you might be autistic, by the way, this could help you if you just don't know certain things that you might have. Anyway, the next one is shyness, but like not always. And if you have Asperger's syndrome, then you probably won't be as shy. People with Asperger's syndrome normally want to be around other people and want to socialize and can be quite loud but they just don't know how to do it um my brother has asperger's syndrome he can be quite loud and he talks to anyone but then he's just not that good socially and doesn't really know what to say um however i just have typical high functioning autism so i'm more shy in certain situations for example, I haven't said a word at ballet for like three weeks. Um, I go every Wednesday from 5.45 to 6.45, so an hour. And so for three hours, three weeks, I literally haven't said a word. If someone like says something to me and I think it's supposed to be a joke, I might smile or do a little laugh, but then I just turn away. Um... And that's, again, only in certain situations. Um, like at school, I barely say anything. But if a teacher asks me a question, I'll try to answer it. But I wouldn't put my hand up. Um, the next one is connection to objects. This is a big one for me. I have these gnomes. I've already spoken about them, I think. Hang on. There is an example of one of the gnomes. Um, I have like 8 to 10 of them in total. They all have names. This one is messy because he looks like he's carving something and it's probably going to go all over the floor and that's messy. Um, they all have voices, personalities and names and they live in my dollhouse and sometimes they come with me where I go somewhere. But at the moment, I'm mostly connected to this suitcase because it feels nice. And that's actually part of the stimming thing because stimming can include touching and feeling surfaces or objects. And I just like the feel of this and I like to hold it. I've always been like that and I think maybe that's why I like fairies so much because I like tiny objects and just to hold them. Um, I had to draw the mouth on because it actually came off. Um... Then there's all my favourite tiny objects in it, and I like holding them. Um, and I literally take this wherever I go. I took it to my grandma's. I fiddle with it while I ate my dinner today. Um, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I have it. Um, on my bed, there's a builder bear, and I actually put it right next to the builder bear, but so it won't fall off. So it's like on the other side of that, so it can't fall off. But like, I literally have this everywhere. I fall asleep with it by my side. I wake up in the morning and I take it with me. Um, see, right now, this is what I do with it. I just go like this. Or sometimes I'll go like this. And I just love it a lot. Um, the next thing is a big imagination. Um, so... Um, 
things like just imagining scenarios before they happen um i've always loved fairies and mythological creatures and i can always invent games in my head but i won't necessarily play them um i can think out situations pretty well until they're almost real and i'm almost like in a really big daydream but um yeah i've always just been how having a big imagination um and i've heard that's one trait also um the next one is black and white thinking this was in my ados test when i was diagnosed um it just means straightforward thinking and not thinking too much outside the box unless i'm really interested in it so for example fairies i i study that and that's another thing special interests um i'm obsessed with fairies and stuff like that and i study everything about them and i have books about them and i watch documentaries about them recently autism has almost been one of my special interests just because I was wondering if I had it now I've been diagnosed I just did loads of research on it because I'm interested in it so if the camera's moving I'm just rocking right now um but um yeah and see I always have to hold something right now I'm doing this once once the teacher handed out a piece of paper like a worksheet and I literally ended up ripping it slightly but by accident I didn't know I was doing it um, until I just looked down and found that I'd ripped my paper all the way along the top. Um, but, yeah, um, the person who diagnosed me said I had black and white thinking. She told me to place these foam shapes on, um, an image, and instead of just saying, like, where should I put them, should I do them in a pretty pattern, um, which one goes where, I just, she said place the shapes on the thing so I just went like that and then looked at her and waited for the next task so that's what black and white thinking is and then the last thing on my list is theory of mind this means that um you don't um understand a lot of the time that people don't know what you're thinking so for example if I'm having a bad day and someone says something that I find annoying I'll think oh why are they doing that when I'm having such a bad day but I won't think well they don't know I'm having a bad day and I'll think they're trying to make it worse or there was an example where it was like um I, I was when I was doing my research um I found this man who was talking about it and he said they do this test where they say a story and the story goes this young boy wants a pet dog really badly and he's wanting it for christmas and finally it's christmas day but all he gets is a book and he says that's a lovely present thank you and why did he say that this one really confused me i mean if you wanted a dog really badly and you got a book i'd be really really disappointed um not just not to be rude but another thing is autistic people usually find it hard to um accept something new if they don't want it or if they've asked for something for christmas and they really want it why it's hard to understand why someone would get you something you they don't know if you want it or not when you clearly want something else um so a neurotypical person would normally say this isn't always but normally say oh they're saying that because they don't want to hurt the parents feelings and an autistic person a lot of people have said oh i know the book must be about puppies and that's actually something i said um because i don't really get why if you really really wanted something and then you got something completely different why you'd say oh that's lovely present if you didn't think it was because that's a lie and yeah it just gets complicated but um i hope you enjoyed the video i know it was complicated but um hopefully this helps and i'll see you in my next video bye